Before we continue, I would like to thank OBS for providing all the streaming and video services for us for free. Just like BEST, we ha are doing volunteer work and uh, OBS is doing this completely voluntarily. So if OBS has a Bitcoin address, maybe we can also add that to the paper. We tried the QR code that was uh, for Best Helsinki Bitcoin address. That didn't work, so we'll provide you a new one. Someone was trying to fund us already, but it didn't work. However, the consensus did work, so there was some problem regarding that. But let's let's try to fix that. We can post them af after in the social media. So, okay, please continue, Nico. Thank you, Aki. So um, I figured since the panel seemed pretty nice, the, the guests were nice, we would continue with the next topic with, in the panel form as, as well, if the panel is still willing to participate. Are you guys? Please, uh, please join in. Because uh, the reason why I want you in is because you are representing this kind of uh, new types of uh, ways to organize companies. And everybody else is also welcome to join in if you have uh, in insight to share, if you're working in a flat organization or um, anything like that. Uh, again, disclaimer for, for new viewers, um, this is not advice of any kind, just, uh, just some guys talking about cryptocurrencies and blockchain and giving sharing ideas. Uh, please do your own research, uh, don't trust blindly trust or follow anybody, listen to people, formulate your own opinions and be safe. So uh, this uh, topic is the star, um, inspired by the book called Starfish and the Spider. Has anybody read it by any chance? One. Come on. Nobody, nobody else read it. Um, make sure that you read it. I, I think it's quite uh, useful uh, and it's quite an uh, easy read. It's uh, rather short and it makes a lot of, uh, lot of good points on why uh, leaders, organizations, and decentralized organizations can do so well. And funnily enough, this was written like maybe I think two or three years before Bitcoin. But if you read it and you know about Bitcoin, it will uh, become instantly clear that Bitcoin is the first and, and the biggest uh, representation of what an unstoppable force a decentralized organization can be. So uh, quickly about the structure. So the reference of, of starfish and the spider is that uh, a starfish, if you remove a leg, it will grow a new one. Um, spider, if you do the same, it won't grow a new one and will be crippled. So that's the kind of like how you can hurt centralized organizations. Or if you crush the head of the spider, the whole organization dies. Whereas if you cut a starfish in half, it will grow, there will be two starfish. And if you cut those in half, there will be four starfish. So this is the resilience of a decentralized organization because there's no single point of attack. A CEO, for example, that can, can put into jail and then that, that way shut down the project. And um, Starfish will just uh, keep multiplying and, and going more decentralized. So this is something that I want to talk with the panel here. Uh, how is leadership in a, in a decentralized organization and versus centralized organization? You can see uh, typical characteristics here uh, that I'm not going to uh, go through, you can read from there. The, the point is that the leadership is done by example in, in decentralized organizations. So um, rather than giving orders, we, we strive to inspire through our own actions. So a um, good, uh, good uh, idea would, would be to not ask any, or not expect anybody to do something that you're personally not willing to do. And that way put yourself in, a, in the same level and same boat, so to speak, and show the way. And uh, I think uh, maybe our panelist here could add to that. What kind of uh, organization do you have, uh, Ikko? Yeah, so first of all, uh, decentralized organizations are not always better than centralized ones. So uh, it's not like uh, there's old and new in this sense. Uh, if you look at the decision making, uh, centralized organizations have a lot of benefits. They are much faster in execution. They are much faster in making decisions on, on evolving technology. So if you look at how slowly Bitcoin is evolving, uh, it's because uh, everybody has to agree and come to consensus on the, on the direction. Uh, in some applications, like money, that is a good thing. So, so in, in, in this specific use case, it, it works perfectly. But then if you look at something like artificial intelligence, 
and you try to make decentralized decision making and artificial intelligence, you are going to be way too slow to compete in the marketplace. Um, so how I look at this um, is that, that uh, one of the biggest problems with the, with the current capitalism in general, like, uh, like uh, in, a, in a system, is that, that uh, when human greed drives any kind of system, the system ends up with the greediest and the, the most excellent greedy people owning everything. Uh, good thing with the cryptocurrency decentralization in that regard is that if some cryptocurrency centralizes to the uh, hands of a few, everybody else will walk away. So, so it has a built-in mechanism of, of, uh, of uh, democracy, you know, which is based on the fact that if, if I stop benefiting from something, I can walk away and do something else. Uh, in governments, you can't do that. So how I look at the, uh, the future of organizations is that I would absolutely love to see organizations uh, like this, I mean, people call it decentralized autonomous organizations. Uh, I think an AI-led uh, autonomous organizations that are, are controlling like human networks are very interesting. And we are building one. So we are planning, if we are successful in, in uh, raising enough funding and, and, and having good enough business with import over years, uh, our current exist, already existing artificial intelligence will become completely autonomous. So our, the input as a network can be controlled by AI end to end. Uh, so then it, there will be a network of humans operating under the governance of an artificial intelligence that is not human. And the benefit of that is that you can eliminate the human greed from the equation. I mean, uh, if you have a leader of an organization that is a greedy person, I mean, they want to maximize, let's say, you want to take out all the value from Facebook and you know deliver it into whatever few thousand shareholders that they have, uh, everybody else suffers. But if you want to create an organization where the whole, all the members of the organization, can, like that the community will benefit, then you will have the system where there's some equitable mechanism of dividing back all the benefits of that community to, to users based on their contributions. Yeah, really good, really good start. Uh, so basically, yeah, we we've been uh, operating in a in a traditional centralized way, having a CEO um, run the show alongside the board. Uh, and 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 one thing that's actually quite interesting is that uh, because we've had like private investors, we've had the traditional old money investors, where the greed is a virtue like 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 trying to amass massive amounts of 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 assets into one centralized entity uh, and control that um, is a virtue but in this new world for example there's a project called Aragon uh, which is fundamentally a really good uh, like a, a, a breakthrough uh, project built on the Ethereum uh, network and Aragon is, is, is basically enabling anyone to run or you know start and run a decentralized autonomous organization uh, which wouldn't be controlled by any single greedy entity uh, like Apple or, or, or Facebook. these Facebook uh, shitheads. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, I, I think that you know that's that's going to be the future. And actually, you know, I think that's that's a better future because now it offers or it will offer a level playing field for 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 the masses. And just like Mikko said, that you know, uh, only benefiting the two thousand sh uh, shareholders of Facebook versus actually giving giving funds to the uh, billions of, of, of users uh, and, and, and giving giving them money. Yeah, sure. Keep it, it's good. Keep it short so we can get to the sure. uh, Europe has currently a uh, opportunity of a century. So China and the United States are currently having a huge backlash with blockchains because because the top one percent, the oligarchy that runs the economy in both countries, is is hitting back and doesn't want to lose the control. So what's happening in SEC, all of these organizations that serve those governments are trying to grab back the power to the top 1% that, that controls the government. Uh, Europe does not have such, such a, like a, a centralized oligarchy as, as, as these countries have. And, uh, and uh, Germany took this lead by, by enabling um, a super nice environment for crypto companies to build. So I think 
if Europe is being progressive enough, uh, it could enable this new world where we build businesses that are more altruistic, more beneficial for the members, and less uh, aggressively uh, capitalistic as the current ones are in the, in the United States and China. And this could be disruptive for those guys because when you compete with European blockchains against American capitalistic models, um, people will start seeing those capitalistic models as, uh, as uh, not as interesting because they do not return the value back to the community members in the same way as those, those, those decentralized models are. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the teams, uh, the tribes, uh, the nations, that like uh, people that are part of them, that, that I think the people matter, that, that they kind of uh, they can be looked in that, that where they want to be part of like that. I was last night visiting a company called Vincit. They were uh, three years, 14, 15, 16, then they stopped to compete. They were the uh, winner of the company of the year uh, by the people working in that company. And uh, so learned there good things. We talk from leadership, they have a new product called leadership as a service is, is kind of coming. You can take leaderships differently. When our own own communities like a blockchain forum, we ask like three things that, that what you see as a possibility with blockchains. Uh, like in positive way, we ask everything what's positive, what's not positive, what's negative like that, what you see there. And we ask as well that, that uh, if you are new or you don't know yet that if you want to know more about it, like I think that's kind of the thing that, that we have to take the people with in the decision making. It's a lovely thing that we are Europeans that, that we don't have like in those oligarchs there that, that we just used to fight 500 years with each other here that, 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 uh, and, and, and we Stay, stay like this, but let's continue on that and, and do good things together. Good points this part. I would like to add that uh, when it comes to human psychology, people usually want someone to lead them, but not all the time. I think it's like in every, every organization, when something bad happens, like a catastrophe situation, then you need to have who's responsible. There's a leader usually is responsible or some staff member. I think that is the, what needs to be done. But like normal everyday situations, I don't think the old version of organization is that needed anymore. And I think people usually think the same. Yes, excellent points again. And uh, yeah, I would, I would add that it is true we don't need uh, decentralization for everything. Same goes, we don't need uh, blockchain for everything. However, I, I do think for some applications, for example, uh, like organizing uh, uh, these kind of projects, like I'm going to talk uh, briefly about uh, my, two of my projects that have flat organizations and the decision making there. It, it is true, it's a lengthy process because you need to reach consensus. However, for some products, it's exactly what is needed when you're working on protocol level things that need to, you need to get it right, you can't get it wrong. Like there's been this, uh, for example, parity hack that uh, you know, um, a lot of funds got stolen because uh, somebody installed a self-destruct button in the code by accident. So stuff like this will happen less when the, when the pl uh, pro protocol is um, decided on upon with consensus. Of course, it's not perfect, but uh, it, it works a lot of times. What, what I would like to also move on to uh, is the networking uh, effect of a decentralized organization that uh, uh, you, it will enable a group of individuals to network together as, as single operators, providing value to each other, uh, being together and, and building something together voluntarily, and I think that creates a much stronger incentive model for long term. Uh, than a hierarchical organization. Of course, uh, in the future we will see both, but we, I would say, I would argue, we will see less of the more traditional companies. Uh, quick remarks and then we move on. Yeah, uh, very good point. And um, there was a really good um, notion of, of what's the future like. The future will be kind of like borderless and we will be 
uh, as a as a as a humankind, we will be uh, focusing on 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 certain like topics, like like for example, if if me and Nico we both like uh, knitting, we could then uh, take part in the knitting ecosystem and earn knit tokens. And and it's not you know it's it's not bound by geography or bound by you know central jurisdic jurisdiction, but it's it's like truly global, uh, which is a really good kind of like enabler uh, with these blockchain technologies. I wrote a blog post uh, recently about topic: uh, all communities uh, will need to tokenize, and and the idea was that. In today's world, running a community costs mostly, uh, I mean, the costs of running a technology on the cloud has gone down, but at the same time, the cost of acquiring users to any community or members to a community has gone up uh, because of the competition on the app stores and other places. And, and the cost of developing a competitive feature set of running a community has also gone up uh, because, because technology has advanced. Now, with this environment, uh, there's two possible ways of, of building communities successfully. One is that you raise billions from venture capitalists uh, to, to fund that growth initially when you are acquiring members and you're not monetizing anything. And that's how things like Facebook get built or Snapchat. Uh, but then there's another way where you invent a token out of thin air and you give it for free for people to pull them in so you are, the marketing cost is, is uh, giving tokens to people. That's also a cost because, because of course, the cost is uh, then built into the token value. But uh, it enables you to build a community where these venture capitalists do not exist and these venture capitalists do not need to get the return for their risky investments. So now you can fund building that community and run that community in a new way. And I think in, a, in, in the future, if you want to build a competitive startup in that space, uh, you have to tokenize because if you don't tokenize, the only alternative is to do the VC route. But because the tokenized communities are delivering more value to its members, uh, it eliminates also the second option. So that you have only option you have left is to tokenize. Thank you, Mikko. Uh, real quick one. Yeah, I just wanted to the wisdom, wisdom of the groups, the second most important thing from last week. People say, I have to read it in Finnish, I translate it, it's that vertaisesti toimivat ihmiset voivat yhdessä alkaa ajamaan asioita tai vain yhtä asiaa ilman hierarkista johtajaa. So the thing is that people really can use this uh, blockchain and uh, these new economies uh, ways to start to do uh, single uh, things without uh, a, a, a leader that, that was looked, looked, looked wrongly here. So uh, we wanted to keep it short. Okay, networking events usually when people are interested in the same subject, I think it creates this bond where monetary values and those kinds of things are not that important. And I think that creates the real value what after all, brings the greatest value for the all parties. Thank you, panel. Really excellent thoughts. I, I wish we had more time to keep discussing this, but for now, I'm, I'm going to uh, excuse you guys, and uh, I'm going to uh, briefly um, outline two projects that I'm working on, and after that, we'll have uh, one more presentation from Inbot. Let's, uh, let's, give a, yeah, let's give a hand to the panel.